Hey everybody, welcome back to Freestyle Friday. Today we're finishing up the bench vise we started last Friday. We built the head last Friday and now we're building the tail and the bars that slide in and out of the bench. And this is a quick peek at how it all works. So this is supposed to be really super fast and um, I'm really happy with the way this build came out. So if you stick around to the end of the video, we'll talk more about it and show it off a little bit more. One of the first things I needed to do was route a groove in those bars that slide in and out of the bench. And this is gonna accept some threaded rod that um, I use later in the build and you'll see that here in a second. And I made that little custom plate Monday on Money Saving Monday. So if you haven't seen that video yet, go back and check it out. It just allows me to use my router as kind of a center finder and um, route grooves right down the center of a piece of wood. So after I got those grooves cut out, I glued the stanchions back to those bars. And again, if you hadn't seen last Friday's video, this it won't make much sense. So I'd go check that out first. And then um, after the... Uh, the fretted rod was glued into those grooves. I needed to create this L plate and the L plate is going to have uh, two pieces, the, the, the top or the face, which is actually going to be the clamping face. And then the backside, which is going to be some hard maple. And that's going to sit on those uh, threaded rods that we just glued into the, um, to the bars that slide in and out. So now this needed to be pretty precise right here. This little system is going to keep this whole, uh, uh, clamp nice and true and square to each other so I took the time to make sure that when I glued this up I clamped it well I made sure that everything was really nice and square throughout the whole process so I checked it before I clamped it after I clamped it I checked it again and after I took the clamps off I checked it again as well <laughs> now once I had the unclamping done I, I checked it again and then I drilled out some um, pre-drilled hole, pre-drilled some holes, and then uh, put some screws in. Now those are pretty long screws. I used two and a half inch long screws. Really wanted to get a good bite. And then came back with my sanding blocks and uh, just cleaned up the sides a little bit. Now I put a spacer in the back there because these things are sitting on bolts. They're not, you know, fastened right to the faceplate, so they tend to move a little bit. That way I get to get this really nice straight. Uh, shot when I was doing my layout. So I marked out on the back of the plate some grooves that I needed to cut and this is going to match those threaded rods that we just installed so this will actually sit over the top of them. It'll all come together and make sense here in a minute. And again I used my router I made in Money Saving Monday that I, I added a little fence to it so I could get some real accurate um, grooves cut. That might start making sense now why I built that on Monday. <laughs> So after I got those grooves cut, I set it on the uh, the system there, and just to make sure that it was gonna, you know, slide nice and forth, back and forth, really well. And it was a little tight, so I came back with a chisel and just opened it up just a little bit. I'm, I mean, we're talking a thirty second of an inch, so um, it wasn't very hard. I just used the chisel, took just a second. It's you know, a sharp chisel go right through hard maple like butter, so it wasn't a big deal. Then after I had everything, you know, sliding nice and. Uh, smooth back and forth on that threaded rod. I came back and I'm going to add these couplers here. These are threaded couplers and I'm going to actually cut these in half the long way and they're going to get set in that groove and that's actually going to engage with the threaded rod when the clamp is in the stop position and that's what will hold it in place. So I needed to um, create a um, just a hole for these uh, threaded rods to sit in or the, the uh, couplers to sit in so again, uh, more chisel work, and uh, whenever you're working with hard maple, man, you got to make sure those chisels are sharp. So I just laid out where that would go, where the uh, coupler would go, and, and just kind of scribed it out with a chisel just so I could break the grain there. So when I started carving on it, it wouldn't cause too much problems. So, And again, just I kept checking it. I want to get it pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to use epoxy to epoxy those in place. So I can use epoxy as like a little bit of a filler if I don't get it exactly right. But I did take the time to get it pretty close. So I was watching the angles of the, of the coupler as I was cutting the holes and just trying to keep it as close as possible. Now I cut it a little bit longer than the coupler because I needed, needed to move back and forth because the threads on each of those threaded rods are not going to be in the exact same position. So I needed to be able to move them back and forth when I actually do the final glue up. And then I came back and just cut the uh, couplers in half and I used the, the high ridge as kind of like a, a guide. I came down one side of the high ridge and then after I had cut about halfway through I added a, a bolt to that coupler so I could clamp it back up and not worrying about the bolt pinching as I cut through it. 
I would like to mention I did not have a guard on there and whenever you're using those uh, metal cunning discs they can explode it's very dangerous so always do that at your own risk it's always a much better idea to have the guard on but I change out my those cutting things so much it's hard for me to leave a guard on so after I got the uh, holes all chiseled out I filled those holes with uh, epoxy and then put the couplers in and then I set the, the uh, clamp right where it's going to go and that's going to line up everything it's going to line up those those couplers in those holes and after the the epoxy dried I came back with again with a sanding block and just kind of cleaned it up and made sure there weren't any real high spots that were going to interfere with the, the smoothness of the action so next I needed to create this this housing or this channel that goes over that the bars that slide in and out of the the bench vise and um, they needed to be at a little bit of an angle. So what's going to happen is the the, um, the bench vise is going to tilt up and that's going to disengage the threaded rod from the coupler and then I'll be able to pull it. So you see that little angle right there allows me to tilt that bench vise up. Um, so I have a little bit of room so it just, dis just barely disengages the coupler. And then when I put the clamp on it, it's going to create pressure and push the bar into that coupler so it'll act, it'll act like a lock. So the, the clamping pressure in and of itself will push the threaded rod up into that coupler and create a really significant, you know, strong lock. So after I, I did a little messing around, I figured out that I'd cut my angle a little bit wrong. So I added some spacers to the top of those, that the bodies or the housing there. And um, I just uh, used some CA gel to glue those on and then uh, took some hard maple and um, put a plate over the top of all this. This is just going to enclose those slides. Now I did not glue these in place. I wanted to uh, make sure that they were working right. So I actually left them just screwed. I just screwed everything in. And then again came back and just kind of cleaned up all the little extras with the sanding block. Now that's pretty much the build. So I uh, put a piece in, flipped it over and clamped for the first time. And you can't hear me off. I'm actually doing a, a woohoo and a hooray. And I'm just, the clamping power on this was just awesome. So I was really, really happy with the results. And I think I turned the camera off and did it like a little dance, ran around the shop a couple of times. So I was pretty happy with the results. So to install, it's real simple. You just put the, uh, the back plate, uh, you know, up against the table and uh, bolt it in place. Now, my, I've, got my, I've designed this to work with my table when I'm done with the table, and that'll make sense in future videos. So you saw that there's a little bit, the plywood's a little higher than the actual vise, but when I do the final uh, top on the table, on the bench, everything will come out nice and even. So after putting the face plate back together, I waxed the runners a little bit and then put it in place and um, gave it a go. So again, what happens, you just put, uh, when you put pressure on, it tilts that whole vise or head of the vise down, which pushes that threaded rod up into those couplers that we carved in. And that creates this really significant lock. So. I went through and I was, you know, just clamping all these different pieces down. And I gotta tell you, super, super happy with this build. The clamping pressure is awesome. In fact, I uh, broke my vise already from too much clamping pressure, but I'll fix that. And I'll talk more about that in um, my director's cut video, which will be on my other channel. Links will be in the description box below if you'd wanna see that. So thank you very much for watching. I certainly appreciate it and I really hope you enjoyed this build. I am really happy with the results.